And so here's our first example. We're going to find x such that x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. That is to say, now we're going to find the x's that would be the x-intercepts if we were to graph this parabola. Um, so we're going to use, as we mentioned before, the quadratic formula. If ax squared plus bx plus equals 0, then x equals negative b plus or minus b, the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Having said that now, we're going to start applying this in this problem. Okay. The first thing we observe is that our a, the coefficient in front of the x squared term, has to be 1. Our b has to be 5. Our b, of course, is our coefficient of the x term. And the constant, the c in this case, has to be 6. So c equals 6. So now we've got the main facts that we need to start solving this problem. We are now going to start setting up the problem. We're going to write down our formula first. This is my advice to you always. Write down your formula first. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now again, the reason why I want you guys to practice writing on your formula first is because I want you guys to program it in your brain, so to speak. The repetition of copying this formula uh, uh, perfectly each time will imprint it in your brain so that if you ever need it and you're under stress for some reason, let's say you're taking a test um, or for some reason you need to know the quadratic formula, you will just know it automatically. Okay. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna start plugging in. My b is five, so it's gonna be negative five plus or minus the square root of five squared minus four. Our a is one times one. Our c is six times six, all divided by. Our a is 1, so what's 2 times 1? 2. So now, just so we remember, what does it mean when we square something? It means that we multiply that number by itself. So 5 squared means 5 times 5, which will give us 25. Right? And we know that 4 times 1 is 4 times 6 is 24. So inside this root, we're going to have 25 minus 24, which is going to be 1. And we ask ourselves, okay, what number times itself gives us 1? And the answer there is 1. Right? So we get negative 5 plus or minus 1 over 2. Okay. Let me just break that down a little more over here on the side just to make sure that I don't lose any of you. But that way I can keep this calculation going very neatly over here. And I want you to notice that too about when I'm doing this problem up here. I'm doing it in a very organized way. And I want you guys to emulate that because it will also help you when you're doing problems. Okay, so I'm going to do this part here. The square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6. So we saw right here that the 5 squared is 25. So this becomes the square root of 25 minus 24. 24 because 4 times 1 is 4 times 6 is 24. That gives us the square root of 1. Now, we want to remember, the square root of a number is a number which, when you multiply it by itself, gives you the number you're square rooting. So, let's pretend that the square root of x were equal to, a, to y for some reason. Then this would imply that y squared had to be x. That's basically what we're saying. 
if, 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 so in this case, the square root of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. In a similar way, and, and I don't want to overburden you with this right now, but I just want to make sure you guys are understanding. Let's imagine I get a more interesting example, like the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2, or in other words, 2 squared, is equal to 4. Like that. So that's how I simplified that radical. And so now we have this fraction over here, x equals negative 5 plus or minus 1 over 2. What does this mean? This means the following. I'm going to get one root or one x-intercept by using the plus sign, and I'm going to use one by using the minus sign. So let me do that here. x will equal negative 5 plus 1 over 2, which will be negative 4 over 2, which will equal to negative 2, and x will equal negative 5 minus 1 over 2, which will equal negative 6 over 2, which will equal negative 3. And so now these two are the roots of our equation, or the x-intercepts of our equation, of our quadratic equation. By the way, just so you know, roots, x-intercepts, and zeros are synonyms for the x's that make this equation x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. Or in general, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Yeah. And so these are those values. And now, before we wrap up, I want to prove to you that these are the roots. And right here, this is a pro tip. Whenever you solve a problem, you want to test to make sure that it's the right answer. In order to do that, I'm going to plug them into the original equation. So I'm going to erase the work I did now over here, and I'm going to bring those solutions over here, and I'm going to calculate to make sure that they make this equation true. So we said that x equals negative 2 is one of our x-intercepts, and that x equals negative 3 is another one of our x-intercepts. Okay, so if we were solving the problem, we could just stop there. These are our solutions. But my advice is always, always, always test your work. Make sure that you're getting the right answer. Because sometimes we can make careless mistakes. All of us. And it's always important to test. Okay. So I'm going to start by testing x equals negative 2 first. I'm going to plug it into my equation here. It'll be negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 6 equals 0. I want to see if that's true. So I'm going to use the left hand side and I'm going to figure out. Negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 6. What is this equal to? Well, negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which gives us a positive 4. Then we're adding 5 times negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So it'll be minus 10, because when we're adding a negative number, it's the same as subtracting. Finally, we're going to go plus 6, okay, plus 6. Now, if we look at this 4 minus 10, that is negative 6. So we get negative 6 plus 6. And of course we can see here that this equals 0. So we can see that indeed this solution that we got is correct. This solution makes this equation true. And so it is indeed an x-intercept. Now we're going to test the second solution that we got, which was x equals negative 3. Okay. And so we're going to write that here, x equals negative 3, and we're going to use negative 3 in the place of negative 2 now. 
Let's look what happens here. Negative 3 times negative 3 will be 9. So it will equal this. The 5 times the negative 3 will be negative 15. So plus negative 15 will give us minus 15. And then again plus 6. Plus 6. Now, 9 minus 15 is negative 6. And then we add our 6, right, from over here. We bring this down. And then, of course, here again, we can see that indeed this is 0. And therefore, both of these values that we got, both of these alleged x-intercepts are in fact x-intercepts. We've just shown that they do in fact make this equation x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, true. And there you have it, our first example of finding the x-intercept.